Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here with episode 6.1 of my Rotary Cra Reactor Craft tutorial series. Um, in the last video we talked about the fission reactor, I showed you one and I told you I was going to show you a bigger one. Uh, well here it is. So, it's, this is an interesting thing. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure how these fission reactors work, what the math is behind it, but I'm assuming that there's like an exponential relationship between the cores and the various setups and how much power you can get out of it. Uh, in this video I've got a 12 core fission reactor um, to show you which does utilize central control and control rods and can power six uh, turbines at full capacity. So each one of these is producing its maximum power. It jumps around between 800 something and 950. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, Reka has added or is is planning to add flywheels for uh, turbines in uh, the, the the latest versions, which are for 1.7.10. But anyway, um, they're jumping around. But this is producing, you know, this is six turbines, so it's roughly around six gigawatts. A little less than 6 gigawatts, 5.9 something, I don't know. I didn't design this myself. This this design for this reactor came from a, a forum about uh, uh, reactor craft reactors. Um, but it's got 12 fuel cores. They get up pretty warm. Uh, I don't know if these corner boilers are really necessary. They don't seem to really do a whole lot, but they're there anyway. I can, prob I can probably get rid of these corner boilers. But we've got 12 fuel cores. We've got... Um, eight control rods, we've got central control in the middle, and again I'm using applied energistics just to put the fuel in and pull the waste out, and it's just going into this storage drive. Um, so yeah, we're running six uh, low pressure turbines. I don't know if, uh, how many low pressure turbines your reactor has to be able to run before it can run a high pressure turbine, but we'll talk about high pressure turbines uh, much later. So I want to show you how to build this. Uh, again, it, it, this isn't my design. I didn't create this myself. Um, but uh, I'd like to show you how to build it. Because I know you'll be wondering. By the way, this is not my tutorial world. This is my reactor craft testing world where I build the reactors. Because if a reactor explodes here, I'm not so concerned. So that's where we are. In case you were wondering. Let's come over here. Or maybe I should keep this loaded. I don't know, none of these things are loaded, are chunk loaded, so if uh, if anything untoward happens, it wouldn't be very good. Okay, so I like to build the uh, this thing, I, like, I built it from the center out, and if you've got a place big enough, and you know there's enough room around, let's put a block over here. I could have used angel blocks, but I didn't want to open my creative inventory. I like to start from the center, and start by placing the central control. Now to talk a bit about central control, because you're going to want to need, you're going to want to use control rods and the controller for a reactor of this size, because these are probably going to heat up. A bit, and with this many cores, you wouldn't want something like this overheating and exploding, and you're going to want a way to, to turn it off. That six-core reactor we looked at before wasn't. There's no way to turn it off uh, aside from removing the fuel. So um, here's how central control works. So you place it down, and it's got this GUI. And this GUI represents the blocks that uh, it's controlling it, uh, in the reactor. It, it shows you where the control rods are uh, with this react button. It's got a retract button, and it's got insert button. And I think you can retract and insert individual rods. And what you do with central control is that you put power in the bottom. And if we come to the bottom of this reactor, you can see that I've got power going up into central control through an industrial coil. Now the power requirement of central control is not very high, but it does increase with the number of control rods. It requires 1024, excuse me, 1024 watts per control rod. So I've got eight of these, so I've got 8192 watts going into my central control. Any less than that and central control won't function. So now that I've got central control placed down, I like to place the control rods. And for this reactor, you're basically just putting two control rods on each side out like this. Come on, you gotta hold shift to do that. Now if we look at central control, we can see that central control has recognized the control... Ah! It doesn't matter if there's power or not. If you click on these buttons, it makes the sound effect. Central control recognizes the control rods. That's what these dark... That's what these light gray squares are. So these light gray squares are the uh, control rods. Now, I don't know what these dark gray ones... Black, dark gray squares are. What, I, what I'm assuming is that the central controller is telling you, hey, you could put fuel cores here. 
and and these if you put fuel cores here they would be affected by these control rods that, if that's what they're saying and that's cool I if it's I don't know what this what this means it, it, that might be what it's talking about but I I, I don't I, I just don't know anyway so that's that set up like that and the next thing we want to do is set up the um, the fuel cores for this and the fuel cores are set up like so like this Okay, you don't have to crowd uh, have to hold shift when placing things against control rods because they aren't they don't have GUIs. All right, so these are our fuel cores, placed like this. This doesn't update or anything, but and there's our fuel cores. And we could probably put more fuel cores in here, but I don't know if that would overheat this particular reactor or not. So what we've got here is steam boilers, like that. And then I've got steam boilers all the way around. Again, I don't know if these corners are completely required. I, I'm probably gonna, uh, I would probably test and see if you can get rid of those two. Who knows? Maybe you can, because they don't seem to tick up to 100 very often. And then we're going to add neutron reflectors, and the neutron reflectors only have to go. Actually, I don't even need neutron reflectors here. These center ones I've got here, not required, because remember that the neutrons will emanate from the cores in the four cardinal directions. Thank goodness it doesn't go up and down too. That would be a nightmare to manage these reactors. But they go um, in the cardinal direction, so you only need reflectors on. Uh, where it can actually see the uh, the cores, because that's the only place that, that the neutrons are actually going to be. So the this is where you need to put the neutron reflectors. You don't need the ones in the middle, because there aren't any, there aren't going to be any neutrons down this center line, because there aren't any uh, fuel cores there. Get it? And uh, then, well, you can do whatever you want. Um, you could put steel blocks. I fill out the shape of it with steel blocks just because you could put neutron reflectors here just to fill out the shape. Um, I don't think you actually need any any um, neutron blocking blocks here. Um, maybe you just put some cement around it if you want because like I said before these things have a 75% chance of absorption and a 25% chance of reflection which if I'm understanding that correctly means that neutrons can never get past these blocks. Um, I don't know if that's 100% correct but that's what I'm assuming based on how it's described that neutrons don't go past these. If, if it's not true, then I'm sure Reiki will enlighten this. Every once in a while, a steam escapes, even when I'm voiding it with this. Anyway, this is the layout of the reactor. It's actually, it's not very complex. Um, it's just set up like this. And then you put your steam pipe, obviously, on top of these boilers, your water pipe underneath. I've got just two, I've just got some, some infinite water sources here. Um, but you're definitely going to need a lot of water for this, uh, so just make sure that you're giving this enough water because if, if you run out of water, it's not going to be a good time. I mean, sure, you got control rods, so you can keep it from overheating, but you know, always keep water in your reactor. So yeah, that's the design. Now uh, I want to show you a bit about central control. So I'm pretty sure central control can be controlled by redstone, but I haven't bothered to do it. Um, but what we can do is we can hit central control and we can see that these squares are red. And the reason that they're red is because the, the uh, control rods are retracted. Now if we insert a rod, does that work? Yes it did, it worked. See that rod has now inserted, it turns green. Now it turns red again. If we click insert all, it will insert all of the control rods and we use that to stop the reaction, well slow it. Um, I don't actually know if this number of this number of control rods doesn't seem like it would actually completely stop this reactor um, because these would be able to. But I, I guess the idea here is that there aren't going to be enough f fission events to. Um, I don't know. But at any rate, insert the control rods slows down the reaction probably to a crawl. Really, um, getting a bit hot. A little bit, 300, 200 and a half. Should still uh, keep cool though. But anyway, um, now what happens if central control loses power? Um, this is an important thing because if central control loses power, it 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 activates a scram event. Central control losing power, it assumes that there's been some sort of terrible failure, and it will instantly drop these control rods. So if I go down here and I hit this lever, it dropped the rods. You get that little boom. Power back on. Central control requires me to manually retract the rods. 
So if central control ever loses power, for whatever reason, it will drop the rods to stop the reactor. All right. So if something goes goes wrong is going wrong. Uh, there you go. That's one way to uh, complete to shut the reactor off. Or in this case, slow it down. Because again, I, I I haven't tested this design extensively. Somebody else made it anyway, um, and it doesn't seem like this would completely stop the reactor. But uh, who knows? Probably enough. But yeah, this is big enough to run six reactors. I mean, six turbines. Um, so yeah, just use your steam lines to pump it out into these turbines. And uh, yeah, we get constant power. You see the constant stream of steam. Nothing is. Uh, there's no breaks or anything. If I hit these pipes with the angular transducer, there's plenty of steam in these lines. Quite a lot of steam in the lines. Uh oh. Something getting too warm. I just heard a sound like one of these is getting too warm. And that worried me. None of them are too warm. I don't know what that sound was. I thought that... Did you hear that? It was like that fiery sound. I thought that was the sound it made when something got too warm. Maybe one of these ticked too warm just briefly, but they, they all seem at very stable temperatures at the moment. But yeah, anyway, so this is a 12-core uh, reactor, which can produce just under 6 gigawatts of power. Uh, quite cool, quite a nice design, I like it. Again, this is the design, if you're interested. This is the layout. And you could probably use... Uh, you could totally use this for um, more than just um, producing power. I imagine if I wanted to, I could uh, bash out these four steam boilers and stick some... I forget what it's called in there to make some deuterium or tritium or whatever. But we'll, that, we'll talk about that on another day. But yeah, I just wanted to show you this. Uh, a bit of a larger reactor. It's still not a huge reactor, but it is a, a quite a bit larger reactor um, which uses central control and control rods. So uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed this video. Next video we'll, we'll start talking about um, other kinds of, of, of reactors, maybe breeder reactors, uh, things of that nature. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, stay tuned for, uh, for more content coming up. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.